So welcome to Bird Apps, <laughs> another Mike Unger uh, webinar. Um, I think you're all experienced enough to know that we'll use chat for questions that Mike will take either um, at the end or at a break. And we're recording this, so um, those who, who missed it can have a chance to see it, and you guys can take another look at it at some point. We'll give you a, a, a link and, and um, time frame to look at it. So go ahead and take it away, Mike. Okay, thanks, Tim. I'll go ahead and share my screen. So we're talking about nature apps today. And we're talking about quite a few apps, and but our main focus will be uh, iNaturalist, which I'm really impressed with. So, quote by Aristotle, and I'm definitely curious, always curious about nature. There's so much to see out in the world. So the primary goal of iNaturalist is connect people with nature. And that sounds very familiar because the Salem Audubon Society, our mission is to um, connect people with nature. That's one of our main missions of uh, our society. Uh, iNaturalist is a citizen-based uh, adventure, uh, which is a joint initiative with the California Academy of Science in the National Geographic Society. It can do quite a bit. Here's a list of some of the things it can do. And I know the first one says make observations, but naturally I naturalists can't make observations without human intervention. So you're the one that actually helps make the observation. Uh, the identification is then uh, confirmed by other people um, and the images, they use an image technology to help identify. The nice thing about iNaturalist is it can identify insects, birds, trees, plants, you name it, pretty much anything that's wild in nature, it can pretty well um, identify or help identify. <clears throat> so now there's over a million uh, citizen scientists in the program. And there in the second part, it says you can help create research quality data. Uh, we'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, how you tell if your sighting and observation is research quality. Of course, by submitting all the information, it really helps with uh, citizen science and knowing uh, where different things are located and whether things are protected or, or threatened. Another benefit, if you don't know the idea or unsure of it, it can help you get an ID. Uh, the Seek app, which is also by iNaturalist, uh, we'll get into that a little bit uh, later and what the differences are, but sometimes it won't give a specific ID down to the genus and species. Um, so if you uh, send it on to iNaturalist, then it will even give you a better ID, and usually within hours or days. Here we'll watch a little video. 
iNaturalist is a social network where anyone can record and share their photographs of living things. When you share a photograph on iNaturalist, it becomes more than just a picture. It becomes an observation. It's a record of an organism in a place at a time. Each observation is shared with a global community of naturalists where it can be identified, discussed, and used to give us a greater understanding of life on Earth. Wherever you are, biodiversity is there too. Get out and observe it. Okay. Now, first of all, before we get into um, the app itself, let's do a little on the website. I'll show you the iNaturalist website. Hopefully I can get it up. Here we go. So here's their website. You can do quite a bit here. You can see now 4 million, over 4 million people signed up. I mean, it just keeps growing uh, astronomically. Uh, but like it says here, you record your observations, share them, and then you can discuss the findings or find out and people will tell you, yes, that's the correct uh, identification or no, it isn't what it is, but it definitely contributes to science and biodiversity. I like this part, crowdsource identifications that help you identify all kinds of organisms. Plus it helps you learn about nature. Also, just like eBird help tr you track your birds, uh, iNaturalist helps you track anything in nature, including birds, plants, trees. So let's go over a few of these tabs here. Explore. You can see here and go in and see what the latest uh, observations. Over 75 million observations. 343,000 species have been identified and one point, almost 1.8 million observers. This is for the world. And you can go down here and just see the different uh, observations that are being made. Now, as you can see, oh, here's a turkey vulture. I can click on that and I'll show you pictures of the turkey vulture, where it was seen. This was seen in Virginia. And then, okay, here we see that somebody else has said, oh yes, that's a turkey vulture. And we'll show you later, but you can add these to projects automatically. You can join projects and it will be shared your photo and ID with these projects. Now, since another person has here has, uh, also I deed it, that means it's got what you call a research grade uh, observation. So now it can be used for research. Let me go back and let's find one of these other ones. This one may be, aha, this one here, it says needs ID. Now, if after a certain amount of time, nobody else IDs it, it'll just call it a casual observation. So there's just waiting for somebody in the iNaturalist group to ID it. Now, let's say I don't really want to see the whole world. I just want to see maybe Oregon. So I can go in here and type in Oregon say the state of Oregon. And now I'll only see observations from Oregon. And you'll notice here, somebody doesn't know what this is. So it's shown as unknown. And now later on, somebody will get in there and see it. And they'll be able to give you an observation. Somebody put down a Sierra woodpecker here. Hmm, not sure about that. Shipping Sparrow, but there's all kinds of uh, uh, yellow-faced bumblebee. So here's something a little different. You can see all the observations of the, the bumblebee here. 
quite a few observations, this one being made on yesterday, August 4th. And th that'll probably get somebody pretty quick uh, to identify it and confirm the observations. Here you can also uh, add different, you can add multiple uh, pictures of uh, the subject of what you're doing. For example, a tree, it's good if you can add, you know, take a picture, maybe the bark, the cones on it, and then the um, needles on the tree. And in that way, that can help give a better uh, identification of it. But you don't have to. I normally just take a picture of the pine needles or a fir uh, needles, and it will give you a good observation. But you see who made the observation. He's He or she has made 128 observations. So that's basic observations. You can go in there and uh, get it down to species. You could just put monarch butterflies seen in Oregon or uh, in Salem, Oregon, and then it will break them down <clears throat> into that. Uh, then you can go into community, like on people, and it'll describe the people who are active and high naturalist. You can find out and who's done the most observations in August, <clears throat> the most species in August, and the most total identifications, the leaderboard from last month, and <clears throat> volunteers that are experts in identifications of certain things. Here's a person, 8,000 tax, so they've uh, curated. <clears throat> Here's somebody, two, 22,000. So um, some people that are really into nature and identification. <clears throat> then you can go down to the projects. We talked about that a little bit ago, but there's a lot of different projects that get their information fed through iNaturalist. <clears throat> Excuse me, get a little drink here. And Oregon has quite a few projects. Let's just type in Oregon here and go and see some of the projects in Oregon. <clears throat> quite a bit, Oregon Wildlife Conservation, Oregon Natives, Biodiversity of Oregon and Circe, I won't read them all, but Oregon birds. So quite a few projects ongoing. Anybody can start a project. <clears throat> the Oregon Coast Insect Inventory. even one on biodiversity of Jackson County. So basically when somebody makes a uh, discovery in Jackson County and they've gone in on their iNaturalist and said, I want to contribute to this uh, project, it will automatically uh, send the information to this project. I believe Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, but you see how many projects, we aren't gonna go through every page, but. 12 pages of projects. And then there's journal post. Where they'll talk about different uh, items of nature and post. Here's a website that Professor Meredith has and they're talking about uh, <clears throat> some kind of squirrel here. Oh, an America pica. And so they discuss it a little bit. And there's a forum also that you can go into and bring up various topics. A 
Let's go back. Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. So then under more, this is what I use a little more often. Let's go to tax uh, information. That's taxonomic information. For some reason, it seems to take a long time to come up. There's so much information on there, probably downloading it all or how where they do is uh, is what takes so long. But here you have taxonomic information on all insects, things like spiders, amphibians, <clears throat> mammals, fungi including lichens, reptiles, birds, plants, I mean all kinds of information. Shows the most recent things that were observed. <clears throat> you can go up here into search. Oh, well, let's say I want to look up a Western king bird. There's a Western honeybee. Here, Western king birds. So I can click on that. It will come up and say the latest uh, observations of the king bird, some various photos people of. <clears throat> this latest observation just today, uh, you can see how many observations. Uh, 3.7 thousand observations and 3.4 of them are research grade, meaning they've been confirmed by someone. <clears throat> so you can see May is the biggest uh, Late May is the biggest time when these are seen and reported. <clears throat> There's been 12,000 observations of uh, the kingbird. Looks like this one was the Texas kingbird. He's identified 1,300 of them. I'll go down and give you the Wikipedia <clears throat> information about it and all the morphology and behavior. About the wingspan and the distribution habitat behavior. And it'll give you even other links that you can go to down here. <clears throat> Let's see what it looks like uh, for a plant or a tree. Let's go ponderosa pine. There we go, ponderosa pine. Shows you the pine needles and the cone. Scraggly one. It's definitely must not be an organ. Different pictures of pine trees, the pine cones. Shows you more of Wikipedia. You can go in and see the insects and the taxonomic subspecies of it. Size. Some little facts about it, like using nuclear testing, about the distribution, even the pathology and insects that are attracted to the tree. Here we go to the subspecies and we'll outline the subspecies, but there's just a ton of information. You can spend years here. And so let's go on to, there's also guides. <clears throat> These are guides that are made by people right now. They aren't doing any more uh, guides as far as keeping them up. It's, it's They're presented as is, but there's some pretty nice guides in here by a pretty, uh, quite a few experts. Let's go directly to Oregon for some Oregon guides. Type in Oregon here and search. Oh, plants of the Oregon caves. This is a fairly new one, Aquatic Insects of Oregon. One of my favorite ones is this one here about dragonflies and damselflies by Jim Johnson. He's an expert in this area. 
but you can click on that and you can see all the ones that came in here. Like here's a flame skimmer. If you want a little bigger one, you can click on it and get a nice up close look at the flame skimmer. Have those in my garden. Gives you the same information as it to some of the other uh, sites on the tax uh, one does. It shows here too where they're being seen. The brighter the orange on here, the more that they're being seen. <clears throat> And then the widow skimmer is another one you can go to. So we'll show you all <clears throat> same information being seen quite a bit in Oregon. You can make this full screen and, <clears throat> and it looks like naturally they're seen a lot more in the Eastern US than they are here in Oregon. So that's sort of neat being able to see these guides. <clears throat> you can go into places and actually find places of where to go to search for things of nature. I type in Oregon in the search. It'll come out and it'll break it down by county, <clears throat> the Oregon Dunes, Smith River watershed. People just put in different places that you can go. <clears throat> Let's go to the Oregon Islands. And then so in the Oregon Islands National Wildlife Refuge to Coquille Point area, here's all the things that have been seen there that have been reported. And like we said, it just isn't just birds and stuff, but plants, insects, flowers, even seaweed, sea brush, kelp. So it's really interesting just seeing all these uh, different things. Uh, <clears throat> there are site stats, you can see 100 day trends, um, a moving window of how many observations are ma being made <clears throat> in the last seven days, over 800,000 observations, observations by app. The website is getting the most activity by the blue line, uh, <clears throat> then the iPhone and then Android. <clears throat> the others way down at the bottom, not sure what other would be. <clears throat> the number of hours it takes for an idea to be made on them. <clears throat> Active users at any one time, well, that's a lot. Here on August 2nd, there were 330,000 users. So as you can see, iNatural is getting a lot of views. Recent new users on August 2nd, <clears throat> 32,000 new users. And the number of observations by app, et cetera, projects, different. Uh, I like this, it's pretty interesting, where 73% of the observations, over 61 million, are ID down to the species level. And then uh, another 10,000 down to the genus level. Then last, you can go into the help to get help. We won't go there. Also, there's um, videos on using iNaturalist, how to make observations, adding observation using the web, how to best take photos, and all kinds of nice uh, <clears throat> videos on using. So that pretty much covers uh, iNaturalist, the website. Like we're saying, you can just go in the search box here and search for anything you want. So let's stop that and we'll get back to the presentation. So we've basically gone each of those, how to observe different uh, observations, how you can research different species, 
looked at the projects and guides. Now we'll go into the app a little bit. There is apps for both Android and uh, iPhones and tablet for that matter. <clears throat> the apps are a little easier to use than the website. Especially I only use the iPhone to do my entry. The nice thing, it is free. There's no hidden cost. It isn't like one of those things where you get in to it and you get down to the free app and all of a sudden they have these bunch of add-ons for money. <clears throat> First thing you need to do is download the app on your iPhone or Android phone. <clears throat> Just on your phone, go and look for iNaturalist in your app store. <clears throat> Here's mine. So this is on your phone. This is what it looks like, the iNaturalist app icon. <clears throat> I'm Mike831. I've made 63 observations, my last one being this chicory. But this was taken several weeks ago, so I probably have a few more. <clears throat> and down at the bottom, you can explore... Um, different things and explore um, animals, bird, whatever. You can see your activity. This is the button you use to observe and make an observation. This is some of your, your own statistics, and we'll get into them more here in a little bit. Now, what these little um, numbers here mean, one or two, means that for the Western Pond Hawk, Two other people has confirmed my ID of this Western Pond Hawk. We'll show you how that works here in a little bit. <clears throat> so the first thing you do is you press on Observe button here. Then you press on Camera, or if you've already taken a photo and it's on your phone, you can use your phone photo library. You can even record sound if you want to. I normally press camera and then it'll bring you to your camera. <clears throat> Take a picture using the camera. Then it'll come up. This isn't a very good example, but we'll have some better ones in a second. Then it'll ask you if you want to use that photo. I said, yes, I want to use the photo. And then it comes up to this part. Here's the other photo that I took. That once I found out this one really wouldn't work a picture of a mallard, then you tap on this, what did you see? And you'll get a list of suggestions. It tells you your location. <clears throat> and then it will give you, well, we're pretty sure this is a duck, a goose or a swan. It's in this family. Then it will give you, here's our top suggestions. A, a gadwall, a mallard or a green winged teal. Well, of course, I knew it was a mallard, so I pressed mallard. And then once you do that, it'll come over here and give you this screen, and then you touch share. And then that's when it's put out to other people. <clears throat> and they will confirm your uh, sighting. So once you share, it'll go through here and sync and put it on the iNaturalist um, website and stuff for other people to see. <clears throat> and we'll show you that process in just a second. Once you're all done, you can go back here and click on Mallard. You can see where the observation was made, uh, get information about it, similar to the same information you can get uh, on the iNaturalist website, all the information about Mallard. And this is all on my phone that I did. So now we'll uh, see a quick video and then I'll hopefully demonstrate it on my phone of actually doing it. Okay, so you've installed the iNaturalist app and created an account. Time to get outside and record your first observation. Here's how to do it. 
any living thing, like a plant, animal, or fungus, can be an observation on iNaturalist. Once you find something you'd like to record, just tap Observe and take a photo. You can review your picture, then hit Next if it looks good. To identify it, hit What did you see? If you have an internet connection, iNaturalist will suggest 10 visually similar species and often a common ancestor. You can choose one of those or search for a species name. On this observation details screen, you can add more photos of the same organism or write a note. The date, time, and location have been automatically added. You can also change the geo-privacy of the observation, mark whether it's captive or cultivated, or add it to a project. Once you're finished, just hit share and your observation will be uploaded for everyone to see and identify. That's it. Keep on exploring and sharing. Okay, so there is a... Let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna share, hopefully share my iPhone here. Let's see if it's okay. Must it stop sharing? So let's see if I can share it again. Here we go. Okay. So first thing I'll go into my apps, and here you can see the iNaturalist app right here. <clears throat> I'll tap on that, and it brings me up to my iNaturalist screen for my iPhone. Like we talked about down here, the Explorer button, if I tap that, it'll bring to me to my current location and show all kinds of observations that are close by. So if I tap on one of those observations, I'll tap on this one out here. And it'll come Somebody saw a European gazelle. Mike, it's, not showing, it's not showing the screen you're describing. Oh, it isn't? No, it's got your, um, it's showing your uh, Express VMP login. Oh, okay. Let me try again. Let me stop this share. Okay, let's see if it, is it showing it now? Not yet. Okay. There's two buttons you have to hit. Right, so let's see here. Now I can't even get into. Huh. Okay, here we go. Now. Yeah, try it now. Huh? Try it now. I just uh, I revised some of the settings. Okay. Now that's interesting. I'm not even. Uh... Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can do it now. Oh, there we go. I think it'll work now. That's it. Okay. So let's go back. <clears throat> As I was saying, you can click on this Explorer button here and pick out, here's are all the sightings on iNaturalist around my area. So well, I would go out to this outside one, tap on that, and it will bring up uh, what was seen there. So on Cedar Bluff Circle is a, seen a European gazelle beetle. It was by bio ed teacher and back on May 2nd, 2021. <clears throat> you can go in here and see that um, <clears throat> you can comment on it or suggest an ID. 
somebody did suggest an ID and agreed with the observation. <clears throat> and that's how it will show down here when somebody agrees with the observation, they agreed. Okay, let's go back and go down to activity here <clears throat> and uh, see the activity is going on around you. <clears throat> the most current observation two days ago that I made, <clears throat> coastal brush lupin. And somebody two days ago said, yes, that's what it is. <clears throat> But let's get on to this main one, observe. That's the key one to use when you're out in the field. So I touch the observe. And like we saw in the little video, it gives you these choices. So I'll select camera and I'll take a photo. I have a, something right over here that I'm gonna take a picture of. So I've taken a picture of and asked me, do you wanna use this photo down here? I'll say use photo and then it comes up and here's where you can add more photos if you want to, <clears throat> you know, ask, well, what did you see? You just tap that and it's thing, oh boy, that quick, it came up with it. This is a garden white and it gives you a list of ones it could be. Well, I know this is a, a cabbage white butterfly and it tells you down here visually similar seen nearby so you know it's in the area <clears throat> so I'll just touch cabbage white and it comes to this screen tells you when the observation for me I just made it and then I can touch share first of all down here you can put in geo privacy I never do it only gives you the street, doesn't give you the number of the street. <clears throat> uh, captive is always no, um, is, you aren't supposed to do captive or cultivated uh, plants or animals. And then you just touch on share. And it should be, let's see if I'm, oh, it's loading it now. and see it working up here. Normally it's a different screen when it's loading like that. And I'm not sure why it's not showing that screen, but there'll be a little screen up here and it'll be uh, going across and, oh, here it is. It showed up a cabbage white one minute ago. I can go into there. Here's where it was seen. Cabbage white. It just pressed this little, oops, I did that a little fast. But this little arrow here, you can tap on that. And it'll give you information about the cabbage white, where they're seen. And you can get more information by tapping this information on iNaturalist. So basically, in a nutshell, that's how it works. <laughs> Just easy as that, and it's pretty fast as you can tell. Here's a bunch of my other observations here. And so basically that's how this works. Uh, I'm gonna minimize this and see if we can go on. I'll stop the share of this. And let's go back to We were uh, here at Seek by iNaturalist. It's very similar to iNaturalist in, a, in its uh, iNaturalist app, but it's a stripped down version of the iNaturalist app. And it's definitely more kids oriented. Um, it's for those who want an ID, plants and animals, but don't want to create an account. The other nice thing about it, um, you don't need a, internet connection um, to use it. A 
but we say similar. A lot of people like it, no registration, no internet needed. And identify plants and animals. Has some sections you can tell it's sort of kid oriented because you can, they can earn badges. They see certain <clears throat> number of mammals and they'll give them a badge for that. They can keep earning different badges. <clears throat> the difference between Sikh and uh, iNaturalist, you can see them here. Have to be 13 or older to make an account for iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a little more powerful too, that sometimes seek by iNaturalist can only get it down to, hey, this is a duck or something like that, where iNaturalist app will give you down to the species, genus and species. <clears throat> With the seek uh, one, you aren't really contributing to uh, citizen science because your uh, observations aren't shared like they are over here with the iNaturalist. So those are some of the differences. We'll do a short. <laughs>
and it still shows the 11 planes. So then when I'm done putting in all of my uh, different categories I want to put in, I tap show the trees it could be, and here's a list of them. It could be Western Larch, Lodgepole Pine, Ponderosa Pine. You keep going. The nice thing about here, you'll see on the side, it tells if it's native or not. <clears throat> Go through, you know, tell you all the kinds of trees it could be. And tap on it. <clears throat> and then it will give you more information. You just tap on it, show a status map. <clears throat> where it's primarily found. Quite a bit of good information that you can get uh, from this plant. Let's say if I want, I'm going to try a wildflower reset. So I just hit the reset button here. <clears throat> say I want to do shrub and it's yellow. It has three petals. And let's see if I put it's in, and it's in a metal. The only one plan that could be with my description is green golden brush. So yeah, you can always play around with it. Just hit reset. So it has 3,914 plants in its uh, database. You can just tap this and get information, general instructions on how to use it. Here, you can change the time and place. I have it set for Oregon. You can reset it. Like I went to Wawawa County, Oregon. <clears throat> and you can set even the elevation. Come down here and say I'm near Mao here. I could go down and put it near Burns. And so, yeah, it's a pretty neat app. <clears throat> so let's go to the next one. This is a free app. One that I really like is uh, Dragonfly ID. It'll show you all the dragonflies and damselflies. Go through and it'll give you information about them, structure, identification, similar species that you might run into, habitat, where they're distributed, even the discussion. I mean, there's just loads of information. Uh, so now like, let's say if I wanna find a particular one, I can go in here and let's say, I'll put in Monarch. <clears throat> Oh, interesting. Doesn't come up with a monarch. Oh, it's not a butterfly. I mean, a damselfly. So let's uh, go with flame skimmer. There's flame skimmer. So it does come up. <clears throat> Tap it. Then you get the same information, description of it, size, all the information. <clears throat> now I know we have. Um, <clears throat> Bill from Florida, let's see if I put Florida in here. Oh, here's a Florida cruiser and a Florida bluette. So I can just tap and naturally it doesn't give me any sighting because I have it set to Oregon and the Florida bluette is not gonna be here. <clears throat> but if you had to set to Florida, then that would come up. <clears throat> so there's another neat app. Map and life. Won't say too much about that, but if you want to try it, uh, I haven't used it very much. Uh, you can search the map and what's being seen around the area, <clears throat> say where you want to search, and then it will come up. And, uh, <clears throat> and I guess that's why I don't like it that much, is it's not coming up with. See what's around me, try that. <clears throat> There we go. See what's around me. It'll give you a list of birds, animals, reptiles. 
So I'll show you some of the things that you can see that's around here. <clears throat> but as I say, I don't use that app too much. Um, we went over iNaturalist. We won't go into them, but you can get uh, apps from specific apps, like here's New England flowers, Montana wildflowers. You can see I got quite a few. This wild bee ID is pretty neat. <clears throat> based on your location, they'll give you all kinds of information about bees. <clears throat> you can go and read about the different bees. And there's ones on plants too, plants that bees like and find out more about there. Here's service berry, <clears throat> indigo. But yeah, it tells a lot of information too. Trees of the Pacific Northwest. I like this one. The number one tree. <clears throat> For some reason that one lately hasn't won open, but if I go to conifers, <clears throat> It'll show the different conifers. Now let's try it. Um, it's only showing one tree instead of 10. So I'm not sure what's wrong with the app. But let's say the west side. So I must have some setting wrong in here, but normally I do like that app. Here we have Seek uh, V tree. Let's. Uh, Try that one. I, it's a Virginia Tech uh, tree identification, but you can set it to your own location. I have a set to Kaiser. I just, Woody Plants of Kaiser, you know, list all of the Woody uh, Plants of Kaiser. These are mostly broadleaf trees and plants. <clears throat> Plant ID help. Show me only if I only want to see oaks. It'll show, only show me oak trees. There's a white oak. Not sure why I can't get rid of the um, thing here. But it will show you all the oak trees, etc. You can get use the GPS for your location or enter your location here. You can ask the uh, doctor, send him an email. He'll help you identify a tree or something if you can't find it. Here's where you can download the information. I already did the download. That's how you get the database filled in. <clears throat> so that's a neat one. And it's the trees all over the US. Another one is this Wisconsin Fish ID. Um, even though it's from Wisconsin, uh, it has all the different fish, uh, even ones that appear in Oregon. Like I can go, let's go to different salmon. You know, give a list of all the salmon, Chinook salmon, coho salmon. If I go to Chinook and here, it'll tap here, it'll give a description of the Chinook salmon, even the fins. Breeding adults, what they look like, juveniles, hybrids. Some more photos of them, all different photos, including here's one of the front part of it, a close up of the head, the fin. You just X out down here to get back to where you were. Here's the tail of the fish up close. But uh, yeah, it can give you quite a different. So now if I go back and let's say I put in trout. Oh, here's a brook trout that I want to see. Description of the book, brook trout and all the distinguishing characteristics. All kinds of photos of the brook trout. <clears throat> Similar species. 
The lake trout is a similar species. And if you just want to go home, hit the home button, you're back here. You can do searches by appearance and shape of the mouth, body pattern, distinctive feature. I want ones with long snouts. Tap on here, there's three matches. The long nose gar, short nose gar, and the spotted gar. So look at that snout. So that's another good one. So there's a few of the apps that I use. Get back to sharing the screen. Oops, let's see this. See if I can get back to the right screen here. Here we go. So here's some of the resources that you can use. I like this, uh, my Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife one here, Wildlife Viewing. It has a nice website with all kinds of information. <clears throat> In fact, um, while we're looking at this, let's see if I can go to that website. Oh, and here it is. So wildlife viewing it has amphibians, birds, mammals, reptiles, marine life. Let's go into reptiles, for example. And turtles, so I want to find out about turtles. I click on here. And Oregon has two native turtles, the Western Pond Turtle and the Western Painted Turtle. It'll give you a nice video on the turtles, give information on each of them. And you can do this for almost any species uh, that is in Oregon. So it gives a lot of nice information. I'll see if I can go back to my screen here. I have to stop the share again and reshare. So I'll send these resources out. Bug guide is a good one for bugs. So I want to thank everybody for attending. We're just about a few minutes after our next webinars coming up. Do you have a question, Mike? Sure. You ready for that, uh, Jacqueline? Um, and people, feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. She said there's some unusual logs floating in Cheetah Lake by Lebanon. No one knows the names of the logs. Will not financialists help with identifying them? It, it might help you by taking a picture of it and then submitting it. It might uh, help them be able to identify it. I'd definitely give it a try. You can see that one guy in one video was even taking a picture of some uh, stuff on the uh, tree that um, it wasn't lichen or anything, but it was some kind of fungus and stuff. So it can identify quite a few different things. I'll stop the share for a little bit. And, uh, so let's see, do we have any other questions? Um, you guys want to, do um, you have any questions you'd like to ask without having to go through chat? I just think these apps are wonderful, you know, to be out in the field. And I don't know if, I think we all have curious minds about going out in the field and, and to encounter not just a bird, but a plant or uh, uh, an insect. Um, 
if you can get a picture of it, that's that seems to be the key. You've got to get a photograph of it. But uh, this that iNaturalist in particular just does an amazing job of IDing what you're seeing uh, when you're out in the field. Oh, great information. Thank you. Yep, I'll sure. enjoyed it. It was interesting about especially about iNaturalist. And one thing I'd say is that um, on the iNaturalist app, we just barely mentioned it, but let me get back to that, is <clears throat> you can also record sound on it. I haven't done that. I think I'll do that now. And since I haven't done it, I'm not sure how it would work, but um, I'll see if I can bring a sound up on my phone and use this to record. Um, oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, like I say, I've never used it. Let's get a common bird here. Another thing I like about iNaturalist is that the, your observations then can go towards conservation objectives. Mike, Mike mentioned the conservation strategy project that ODFW has. So if you find one of their strategy species uh, and have assigned that program or approved that program, that project to be uh, part of your observations, then that information will go to them and it helps with the conservation strategy for those species in Oregon. I found a, a, a martin up at Three Creek Lake and I submitted it through Ice Naturalist and I got contacted by ODFW uh, representative. I have another question. From what I understood, SEEK is not going to have anybody else to identify or verify your thing. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Yeah, it will just give you an immediate. Uh, okay. Yeah, but no human is going to be telling you what it is. Now, I'm going to see what happened here. I made a chipping sparrow. And I, this is going to be interesting. So I, so interesting, I guess it won't do anything here that that sound is so far when I just did it, when I hit identify what I saw, it didn't do anything. So I'm going to have to experiment a little more with that sound one on. Maybe it's just to add a sound to your photos as another thing to help identify the species. Uh, but I just haven't used that part of it yet. But I know for our um, bird walks at Mental Brown and some of the other places I've used the iNaturals app and while we were talking, somebody asked, well, what is this plant? I said, oh, well, let's find out. And I'd take a picture of it and we'd find out right away what the plant was. Okay, any other questions? As usual, I'm running a little over. Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending and thank you. have a great afternoon and week, coming weekend and hopefully you will see some of the future um, talks here. I'll go ahead and end it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks okay, thanks. Much.